How's it going, guys? It's Jacob Hawk here with Shay Williamson. And welcome back for our sixth installment of Jay and Shay's Sports, Sports for, for Dummies. Dummies. Today we will be looking at the ever so interesting NFL divisional round of the playoffs and the beginning of the offseason for the rest of the teams in the NFL. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be looking at LSU and Clemson facing off in the national title game. Yep. The Bucks and the Lakers laying waste to the NBA. Mm -hmm. And then you got Gonzaga leading the way for men's college hoops. And then a little helping of deja vu when it comes to NCAA women's college hoops. Mm -hmm. And that is UConn, number one. Wow. All right, so let's... Let's just dive right into what we normally do, mm -hmm. and that is NFL right away. And let's let's give you a little prediction update. We didn't predict the last two weeks of the season. Obviously, nope. we had a break. We're college students. It happens. Mm -hmm. We're back, though. But we publicly stated our picks to one another before the games, mm -hmm. and I had picked the Bills, the Titans, the Seahawks, and the Saints, so I went 2-2. Two and two. And Shane, who did you pick? I picked the Eagles before I knew Carson Wentz was going to get his head blown off. I picked the Texans, my only victory of the week. And I picked the Patriots and the Saints. Yeah. Who lost. And mind you, Shane is no longer in the lead for okay. predictions. But we're tied. It's 46 and 27 <laughs> for both Jay and Shay. Uh, nearly a 2 to 1 ratio. We're both doing well in predictions. Mm -hmm. Saturday, 4.35 p.m., we have the Vikings at the 49ers. This game is very intriguing for a lot of reasons. A lot of people thought Kirk Cousins couldn't do this. Mm -hmm, including and me. I, I think including everybody. Mm -hmm. And do I think they were gypped by a call in the end zone? I think it's a tit-for-tat call. It wasn't as obvious as Roby Coleman last year. Right. But I think that... If the pass interference rules were more enforced this year, it was pretty obvious that one of them had to have been called for that. Yeah. It, it just seemed way too physical. Yeah, and they were both fighting. That's yeah. never really usually called pass interference either way. But Saints fans will be Saints fans. They're upset about it. Mm -hmm. Your season's over. Deal with it. Yeah. Um, I think Levi Stadium is a hard place to play. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Kirk gets the job done this year. Yeah. I'm not saying he'll get the job done next year. <laughs> but I, I think this defense handles the Vikings and the 49ers walk away with a win. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the Vikings defense is formidable. I think they'll keep them in this game. This is Jimmy Garoppolo's first playoff start. He's rode shotgun the two rings thus far, but he didn't have <laughs> much say in either of those. I think <laughs> the Niners... Prove that they're a better team. Kyle Shanahan proves he's a better coach than Mike Zimmer, and the 49ers win. All right. Those are our predictions for Vikings at 49ers. Saturday, 8.15 oh boy. p.m. at the bank. Mm -hmm. Titans at the Ravens. Yes, sir. Give me the Ravens of and course. Lamar Jackson, your reigning MVP. I know it hasn't been announced yet, but it's pretty obvious at this point. I just can't see this Titans defense stopping Lamar Jackson. Right oh. now, I can't see anybody doing it. Mm -hmm. Am I saying they're going to be the Super Bowl champions? Maybe, but I I'm not there yet. I'm just going to take it one game at a time. I think Tannehill gives them a run for their money on offense. And Derrick Henry, dear Lord, he's a beast. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think they can put up a game against the Ravens. I think the Ravens handle them at home. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Uh, anyone who has ever listened to any of these episodes, this my prediction should come as no shock to anyone. I think the Ravens win, and I think they win by a lot against Tennessee. I'm always wary of comparing results from past years, but last year, Baltimore went to Tennessee on a light rainy day, just how it's supposed to be on Saturday, and they won 21 to nothing. Derrick Henry only had 21 yards. Granted, Marcus Mariota is starting and not Ryan Tannehill, but Ryan only had 72 yards last week, and now he's facing a better cornerback duo than what the Patriots have in Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters for Baltimore, so I think Baltimore rolls. All righty. Sunday, 3.05 p.m., you have the Texans at the Chiefs. We've seen this playoff matchup quite a bit mm -hmm. the past couple years, um, and you'd be crazy not to pick Mahomie. Um, I think it's the Chiefs at home. Mm -hmm. I think Deshaun Watson had a formidable playoff win, which he needed for his career. He really did, and I'm happy he got it, but there's no way he's winning an arrowhead. I think... All these home teams have a very high chance of winning, but I, I'm never going to go against the Chiefs at Arrowhead against the Texans. It's just not something I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Do I think this defense will let them down? Yeah. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than a lot of people, a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Chiefs equal one out by about seven. So I got the Chiefs in that one at home. Well, it's interesting because the Texans actually went into Arrowhead earlier this year and beat them. But yep. that's regular season football. 
Patrick Mahomes was a little banged up that game. He seems to be fine now, especially with the bye week that they got at the buzzer thanks to Miami. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see the Chiefs losing this one. Andy Reid, fantastic offensive coach. I think he's well, way better than Bill O'Brien, and I think just the Chiefs, the Chiefs as a team are a lot better than the Texans. Defense is better than last year's is. I think they forced Deshaun into a couple turnovers, and you know what Patty does with those. I think they win by a couple touchdowns. Yeah, and they may have won earlier this year, but that's regular season, as you yeah. said. Arrowhead in the playoffs is a whole different beast. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the loudest places to play in the NFL. Yep. So just good luck being a signal caller. Um, like we said, we both got the Chiefs. Sunday, 6.40 p.m., we have mm. the Seahawks at the Packers. I personally think the Seahawks have a very high chance of scooping up a win in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it just depends on how the package defense plays. Right. So I, I'm not going to give you my pick yet. I'm going to go ahead and let you start us out on this one. Who you got and why? Uh, I like Seattle here because I'm just not a very big fan of Green Bay, which sounds weird because they're 13-3. and three. But if you look at the teams they played this year, you look at the quarterbacks they've beaten this year, not really the best caliber. Russ is by far the best quarterback they've played this year. He'll be the MVP runner-up this year. I think he comes in the Lambeau with, a little something to prove. Um, they'll be the underdogs in this one. Aaron Rodgers just hasn't looked like Aaron Rodgers all year long, and I'm not really confident at 36, year, 36 years old that he can just come in and flip that switch. I think Seattle goes into Lambeau and picks up a big victory. Yeah, um, I know. I don't normally do a lot of shout-outs here, but sh- shout-out to my stepdad, Wayne. Mm-hmm. You know, go Hawks. I think they're going to win this weekend in Lambeau. Um, I don't think it's going to be... A game that's just busted wide open. Nah. But, uh, Wayne, I think you're going to get a win out of your Seahawks this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, now let's look forward to the teams who aren't so happy right now. Yep. And that's the off season, the teams that are already out. My favorite thing right now, personally being a Bengals fan, is yeah. the Patriots are getting disciplined. So um, ridiculous. Uh, I've talked to a, a couple people, and we all think that it's draft picks. I think that's what mm-hmm. happens again. I think they lose a draft pick and yep. for me, when do you say enough is enough and higher punishments are held? Mm-hmm. But when you win six rings, I guess you make money for the NFL and Roger Goodell just it's up to you, man, you yep. know. I just <laughs> the video of the whole incident is hilarious cuz the guy is like, "Oh, you mind can I like just delete it right here and like we don't any, no one has to worry about it or hear about it." And it's just like Bro, it's the Bengals, and you're the New England Patriots. What exactly are you doing? They had one win at the time. They ended the season with two. That's ridiculous. So I don't even understand why. I don't know. Repeat offender. Cheaters will cheat, um, and they'll have to receive their discipline on the couch because they got beat in (laughs) Gillette in back-to-back weeks, one that lost in their bye week and one that lost in their season. So have fun with that. Next is one that makes me giggle because I really don't. Use that word a lot, but mm. oh my gosh, McCarthy is the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, Michael and McCarthy. if I am anyone looking on the outside in, am I a Cowboys fan? I am so disappointed with this. <laughs> like he couldn't make it work with Aaron Rodgers mm. near the end of his tenure at in, in Green Bay. Right. And if you can't make it work with an all-time great, how do you think he's going to make it work with this offense? I know that this offense is the number one in the NFL, the best offense in the NFL mm. when it comes to ranking them. Right. McCarthy is an offensive-minded head coach. But the offense isn't your problem. Right. Why go after something that you're already good at? Mm -hmm. I would rather have seen them hire Marvin Lewis or somebody from college. Mm -hmm. But I guess Jerry Jones' thought process was, let me get somebody who's already won in the playoffs. And let me get somebody who's already beat us. So I, I just... I guess if you can't beat him, join him. But that's 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 how I see that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Jerry just wants a guy with NFL experience, a known guy, a retread, as I like to say, um, and someone who will say yes to his worst indulges. So, good luck, Dallas. <laughs> Next one that blew my mind yeah, a little is, bit. This is funny. Is Joe Judge, <laughs> which I've never heard this name before. No one has. And. You never know. It could be a Super Bowl winning coach in the future. Sure. You never know. (laughs) Sure. But (laughs) what? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. The head coach of the Giants, this is unappealing. This isn't cool to me. I don't see it as 
an improvement over what you had. I just want to move over this one quickly. The Giants, what are you doing? I know you're in the NFCs, but that doesn't inherently make you have to make bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, another hire that happened in the NFC East, because all of them got fired, except for Doug Peterson, mm-hmm. um, would be uh, Ron Rivera. And yep. I think Ron Rivera handled his uh, press conference extremely well. Um, he actually gave me a little bit of hope in the Redskins, which is a lot of people can't have. Yeah. So. I think when the NFC East is shaping out, I like the way this works. Um, Also, in the coaching carousel, Matt Rule is the head coach of Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see how all these things work out. But one team that doesn't have a coach yet, which is still stunning to me, is the Browns. Yeah. You have to make a decision. I mean, you fired your GM, you fired your coach. What are you going to do now? Um, You let a lot of people down this year, so you cleaned house. Mm -hmm. You should have hired Greg Williams when you had a chance. Mm. And that's how I see that. Uh, I... Moving forward, let's look at who has the number one pick. Yeah. And we're both at opposite ends of the spectrum. Your franchise is going to most likely win the Super Bowl. Man, yes, my sir. franchise is looking to get a gem, mm-hmm. number one overall. And I think that they can't go anywhere else other than Burrow. It's not smart. It's not intelligent. Mm-hmm. Unless you're getting five first-round picks, <laughs> do not trade the first overall pick. It yeah. just doesn't happen like that. And. Mm-hmm. If the Bengal, if Andy Dalton had a career year this year and had just gotten hurt, or there's no way they would be the first overall pick if that happened. But I'm saying if Andy Dalton had performed well this year, I would understand trading back and taking Chase Young or trading back and taking Tua. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. It's not feasible. Take Joe Burrow. Listen to your fan base. Let go of Dalton. Move forward. I'm going to leave this one to you. Mm-hmm. I have a, a buddy back home. His name is Darnell. Yeah, he loves the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. And the entire season, he was joshing with me because he was going to get Joe Burrow. But now, Not he, doesn't, he doesn't have that luxury. Mm-hmm. What do you think's the smarter decision? A future QB or an O-line? Because their O-line is abysmal. It is. Wh- where do you go? Do you, this is all a part of the Tua debacle, that him going into the draft. Mm-hmm. Talk to me, Shane. I think, I think your buddy shouldn't be disappointed because I think they should and will take Tua, who is, let's be clear here, one of the the greatest college football quarterbacks of all time. He came into the national relevance dropping a game-winning touchdown on second and 26 against Georgia in the national championship game, and he's done nothing but be dominant since. He had a, he had a 9% touchdown rating, which means 9% of the time when he dropped back to throw the ball, he was throwing a touchdown, which sounds... Which doesn't sound like that big of a number, but trust me, 9% of your plays are throwing a touchdown. That's absurd. I think it's a big risk with the injury, the hip. You know, I got comparisons to Bo Jackson, but it's not as serious because modern medicine and Bo didn't get it treated right away. It's definitely differences in the situation. And he's suffered other injuries, ankles, things of that nature. But I think you take Tua here, you can... You can spend other draft capital on O-line because they got other picks. They yeah. have the Steelers pick with uh, trading Minka Fitzpatrick. I do think you have to set the tone with your franchise. You always set the tone with the quarterback. You take Tua here, set the tone correctly. You can sit them all year one, be bad again, and take a, a good offensive lineman next year. But I think you have to start with Tua. He's too talented to pass on. Yeah, you shouldn't have let Larry Tunsil walk. Mm-hmm. He was, that was a, a bad idea. cornerstone of your... A line. I understand you got to pick out of them, but it's all about who you draft. So we'll see what happens in April. Mm-hmm. All right. The NFL season is coming closer and closer to the Super Bowl, but college football is already there. Yep. You got LSU and Joe Burrow, Clemson and Trevor Lawrence. They meet Monday the 13th at 8 p.m. on ESPN. Oh, wow. Who do you have? Oh, wow. Who predicted this? Was it me? Oh, boy. But, uh, you know, I'm on record on here saying that. Clemson will win this game back when, before the playoffs was even solidified, that LSU and Clemson would meet here, battle of the Tigers, battle of Death Valley. You know, since I'm already on record, and I do feel confident about this pick, I'm going to stick with Clemson, Joe Burrow, throwing seven touchdowns against Oklahoma. That's real enticing, especially all in the first half. He's the Heisman for a reason. However, I do think Oklahoma plays fake defense. I don't think that's a real, like, testament of what they would do against a Clemson defense who was really good that forced Justin Fields into two turnovers he never does that I think Clemson does just enough to hang in there and Trevor Lawrence takes over his cha- with his championship experience and they beat LSU late all right 
Now, you know I love Cincinnati and mm-hmm. my Bengals. Um, and that transfers. I love my Bayou Bengals because yeah. I'm a Joe Burrow guy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I love Joe Burrow. And if we don't draft him, you will see me abandon this franchise yeah. so quick. I'm going to pray I, for you. Yeah, please. <laughs> but there's no stopping this young star. Okay. Excuse me, young stud. Mm-hmm. Okay. He is the best quarterback to grace college put football in the past decade. And that's not a joke. As in this decade, I'm talking about in the last 10 years, there has not been a talent like Joe Burrow. Mm. Name the last quarterback to score seven touchdowns in one half. Beats me. There's none. He is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I I don't see Clemson beating them. Do I see him putting up a fight? For sure. Did I predict Ohio State to come in this game? Yes. If Chris Olave does not take a left on that route and Mm -hmm. takes a right, it's a 50-50 ball. And we don't know where we are. But he took a left. Mm-hmm. The pick was thrown. I don't think it was Fields' fault. No, of course not. Um, he'll have another year. He'll come back. Yeah. And I think Ohio State has a lot more talent next year. Mm-hmm. Um, you lost Jeff Okuda and Chase Young, but you can replace those guys. That's how that works in college football. Yeah, you're getting five stars. Yep. <laughs> but give me LSU in this game by a touchdown or two. Nothing crazy. I don't mm-hmm. think this game ends up out of hand. But give me LSU. So those are our thoughts what's going to happen Monday. Mm-hmm. But let's move on to a sport that's just starting to heat up. Um, and I'm not talking about Miami. <laughs> We're talking about the NBA. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and start me off, Shane. This is your sport. You love this sport. Go ahead and give it to me. Yes, sir. Christmas Day, I'm going to start with something personal. I was in the building in Philadelphia when the Sixers met the Bucks. Very anticipated matchup. The second matchup of the day after the Celtics beat the Raptors in Toronto. And the Celtics, I mean, the Sixers blew the Bucks out of the gym. Joel Embiid shut down Giannis and dropped 30 on the other end of the court. It was a massacre. Yeah. It was a massacre. I think the Sixers are probably the most frustrating team, especially as a fan of them, uh, because they get up for these national TV games. When the big teams come in the Philly or when they go to another big team's arena, uh, they're up. But when it's a random Wednesday night on, and they're only on Philadelphia's local broadcast and they're playing the Orlando Magic, no one shows up to play. But they have shown when the elite teams come around, they do win. However, they did get bad news today as Joel Embiid is out for at least one to two months. Um, he has a torn ligament in his left ring finger. Um, he's going to have surgery on that tomorrow. Unfortunate news, but... They have Ben Simmons to fall back on. The last time that Ben Simmons had to lead the team for an extended period of time, they won 16 games in a row to end the season. Back, not last season, but the season before that. So I think they're in good hands, but it's definitely a big loss, but they just need him healthy for the playoffs. Yeah, I think losing Joel Embiid is a huge piece of moving forward. But as you know, the Sixers are in trade talks for a shooter, mm-hmm. and they have to get one. Yeah. Now it is not an option. You have to grab one. You don't have Embiid. You need somebody to shoot threes. You got to work with um, your big man. You got to work with Horford, mm-hmm. and you got to work forward. You, there's there's no looking back at what's happening. Right. Because now it's now it's a push to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, the Clippers win the second round in the Battle of L.A. against the Lakers. Yeah. What are your initial thoughts? I mean, I think both teams are loaded with talent. Mm-hmm. I just think the Lakers are a better team. I mean, yeah. The Clippers got the best of them in this one, but the Lakers are undoubtedly the better team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think the Lakers, their main problem against L.A. specifically is they have to figure out how to get Anthony Davis and not be a non-factor down the stretch. As a big man, it's kind of easy to inherently take them out of the game because you can double them down low. You can, you can make sure you can double on the catch. You can double on the dribble, make them pass it out quicker than they want to or force them into a bad decision strip them it's easier to take a big out of the game so what frank vogel has to focus on is making sure that anthony davis can still leave his imprint late in the game because he plays well quarters one through three and then they force lebron james to have to do everything against Kawhi leonard and no one in this world can do everything against Kawhi leonard because he's an all-world defender one of the best defenders of all time so that's really Come playoff time, because these regular season games, they're fun to watch, but they really don't Don't matter matter for the playoffs. What they need to figure out is how (laughs) to keep AD in it down the stretch. You know what blows my mind? What is? San Antonio's an 8 seed at 16 and 20. Yeah. uh, Regular season does not matter. You can be poop and make the playoffs. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that they should trim this down to six teams a conference. Mm-hmm. But that's my personal opinion. The, The regular season really just doesn't matter for the NBA. 
Um, that's a lot of wear and tear on some on a lot of stars. Yeah. And a lot of games. Well, with low management, they're kind of getting that yeah, out of there. Yeah. But it's <laughs> it's. I don't like load management. So Me neither. I, it's, let's not get on that topic, not yeah, that tangent. Yeah, yeah. We could go on for like 25 minutes. <laughs> um, but James Harden, still balling. Yeah. Out in Houston. Um, he did get domed last night by Giannis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I don't think anything will change there. Um, he's, he's one of the best players in the world. Mm-hmm. I think he's offensively the best player in the league right now. Yeah. I don't think you can stop him. Um, moving forward to a young star, you look at John Varant. Shout with, out to John, man. Yeah, with Memphis. Mm-hmm. Um, like like you wrote on our script tonight, he is a highlight machine. Yeah, he's good for like two or three a night. Every time they play, you see John Morant on Twitter. You see John Morant on Instagram. He's everywhere, every yep. time he plays. Yep. Hey, uh, Kevin Love, your career almost got ended. <laughs> I wish he made that so bad. <laughs> I wish he made that. And go ahead and explain what you have here, which is what you say a clear talent divide in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and hit me with it. All right, so this has been probably the most interesting year that I've seen because the NBA is just so top heavy. So at the at the top, at the very tip tip top, you have the Bucks and the Lakers. The Bucks have thirty three wins, the Lakers have thirty. And then there's this big glut in the middle of it of just Teams who range from like 27 to 23 wins, which have the Heat at 27 wins, the Celtics at 25, the Raptors at 25, the Sixers at 24, and the Pacers at 23. And in the West, the Nuggets have 26 wins, the Rockets have 25 wins, the Clippers have 26, Jazz 25, Mavericks 23, Thunder 21. So it's like a whole bunch of teams who are from great to good and then... In the last spot in the West, as you said earlier, the Spurs are at 16 and 20. In the last two spots in the East, the Magic are at 18 and 20, and the Nets are at 16 and 20. There are 13 teams over 500 in the NBA, all in the playoffs, obviously, and then 17 who are just below 500, <laughs> which is kind of unheard of. I'm yeah. never, I don't re- I don't recall this ever happening. Usually, there's a couple like teams that. Feisty. Yeah, feisty. they're like at 44, 45 wins, especially in the West that just missed the playoffs. But that's not going to happen this year. If you nope. win 45 games, you're going to be in it because two teams are going to be below 500 and fighting for a playoff spot. And the reason this is happening in the West is all because of the Warriors. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at they haven't hit double digit wins yet. This yeah. is ridiculous. I, I just it's been a rough go of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, after looking at the NBA and the landscape that they've created this year and how crazy it is, yeah, um, with an evident talent divide between its teams, let's take a look at a league that doesn't have much separation between its teams, and that's men's college basketball. Yep. Um, since we've been gone, three different number one teams have fallen. Go ahead and hit me with the with the bad news. All right, so. At the time of our departure, Louisville was the number one team in the nation, who I publicly stated is the best team in the nation before. Don't feel so great about that now. (laughs) They were number one for two weeks, and then they proceeded to lose to Kentucky, as they seemingly always do, and Florida State. And then next up was Kansas, who was number one for a grand total of one week before they lost to Villanova. And then Gonzaga, who is our current number one, they've been our number one for two weeks, but they had back-to-back close calls against 8-8 eight and eight Portland. They were down by double digits at one point in that game. And 7-9 and nine Pepperdine, who they only beat by five points. So it's just not a very convincing slate of teams this year. I wouldn't be surprised if Duke even if Gonzaga doesn't lose, their conference isn't the best, and Duke's in the ACC, so they're going to pick up some wins. I think I wouldn't be surprised if they leap Gonzaga for the number one team. <sighs> this one hurts to read. It, it really does. It really does. North it Carolina has free fault. Oh, I my mean, God. You lost Cole Anthony. You lost Anthony Harris. You lost Brandon Robinson, Jeremiah Francis, Sterling Manley. Oh, you're boy. Eight, you're eight and seven. Oh, Jesus. With losses to Warford. Oh. Georgia Tech and Pitt. Oh um, this is Pitt's first ACC road win since 2017. Oh my God, it's You're... 2020. <laughs> <clears throat> um, <clears throat> this is just sad. Um, I think this team, as we were talking before the pod, that they have five five star recruits coming next year. Yeah. They'll reload. They're brighter signed. days are coming. Um, if you're a Tar Heels fan, hang in there with us. We'll wait for next year. Yeah, and you'll hear Jay and Shay raving about their chances to win a national title. Mm-hmm. But I think they'll end up in the NIT this year, and, Oof. and that's sad. I might not watch. But I, I definitely am not <laughs> tuning into that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is a Tar Heels podcast. It but is. 
We'll be back. You will be back. That's all I got to say. It'll be a short trip to the bottom. Yeah. Memphis. They're thriving without James James Wiseman. Yeah, surprisingly. Um, They're 10 and 1 in his absence. Mm Mm-hmm. And James Wiseman said, you know what? I don't need college basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, I like what LaMelo and RJ and James have all done. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're different routes to the NBA, and they're showing young talent that that's not what you need to do to go to the NBA. You don't have to go the traditional route. Right. But then you can look at cases like LiAngelo Ball. Mm-hmm. You steal a pair of sunglasses, your career's <laughs> over. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't that big of a, a, of a, of a talent. Mm-hmm. But Definitely th- the worst of the three ball brothers. Yeah. But... Uh, I just think that James Wiseman did what's best for him, but mm-hmm. I think that also helped out the team. They're playing team basketball rather than centering it around the number one overall prospect. Yeah, they're ten and one since he uh, since he got suspended and then subsequently dropped out to focus on getting ready for the draft. Um, they let's be clear here; they had a top three class. Like Wiseman was the gem of that class, but they had other top recruits, and they're all showing out in bigger roles. Uh, their only loss so far since James Wiseman has left has been the Georgia and the kind of consensus number one prospect at the moment, Anthony Edwards, who has been killing it this year. He's a, he's a stud on the ball. He can give you buckets any way you want it, and it's his pleasure like he works for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> From the men on the court to some female hoopers, let's take a look at how women's college basketball is shaping up. I know we went through the men a little fast. Mm-hmm. We gotta stay on track here. Uh, yeah. We got back and we got a little, little talkative when it came to football, which is what we love, <laughs> as always. <laughs> <laughs> but let's move on to women's college basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, UConn. Oh my God. Back at number one. This is such a surprise. Shocker. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I read it today and I was like, oh my goodness, this isn't fun. But <laughs> they have a challenge tonight, and that yeah. challenge is happening now. Right now, they are in a very close game, and they are losing. Okay. To Baylor, thirty-three to twenty-eight. Mm. Um, I don't think UConn is the same menace that they used to be. Nah. But they haven't lost a basketball game this year, so you got to give them the credit they deserve. Mm-hmm. But Baylor, Juicy Landrum. What a name! It, it's an amazing name. <laughs> she had fourteen threes in her last game. Yeah. And their game, like I said, is going on right now. So if you wanted to tune in on that, you can, or check the score after Jay and Shea. Mm-hmm. But what we're gonna do for you? is give you guys a little snippet of our early March Madness prediction for women's basketball. Yeah. So, Shane, why don't you start us off and tell me who you got? You know, this is a team that started number one this year. Uh, they lost early to Louisville. It wasn't even It wasn't even in our landlocked states. It was in Hawaii. So I'm willing to write that off as, you know, early season, getting getting the team together type things. But... I still have Oregon. I'm riding with Oregon to win the national title. Uh, Sabrina, she came back on a mission. She came back to bring a national title after falling short in the Final Four last year. They started off this year beating Team USA, the best players in the WNBA. I think at their peak, no one can really compete with them. And I think at the end of the year, we will see them holding up the national title. Well, I have Oregon as well. Mm -hmm. Oregon State. Oh, um, Oregon State hasn't lost a basketball game. They're mm-hmm. second in Pac-12. Um, I think they play some of the, the best basketball team-wise in the NCAA. Mm-hmm. They, they, like, if you look at all of their wins, none of them, and n- I mean none of them, are within ten points. Okay, dominant. And it's not like they've played extreme competition yet because they play in the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're going to end up having to play some harder teams at the end of the year. They'll play Oregon twice. Yeah. At and least. I think that, they, well, actually, they play them back-to-back, which I think is ridiculous. That's... They're going to play them the 24th of January at, mm-hmm. at Oregon. Yeah. And then Oregon travels to them the 26th. That's kind of wild. Yeah. And uh, the 26th one's on ESPN, too, and we're probably going to be checking that one out and talking about it. For sure. But I think that's a great little read for who was right here, but you can never see what happens until March Madness. Yeah, March is a different monster. Yes, but that's one thing we're looking forward to. We'll get some stuff set up for men's and women's college basketball from March Madness. But Mm -hmm. my pick is Oregon State when it comes to women, Mm -hmm. and your pick is Oregon, and that's right now. But right now, that's it for us tonight. Yep. Thank you guys for tuning in. It was great to be back with you guys. Sorry about that long break. Obviously, we can't control that. We're back in action now, though. Yep. You guys have a great weekend. We will see you next week on J&J Sports for Dummies right here on Thursday. 
And you guys have a good one. Stay blessed.